this market keeps getting tested by these new little threats or perceived threats. Um, and it's so far been resilient. But I mean, how many times are you going to, uh, I think, absorb some of these blows and still be able to support this range? I do think that also there's a little bit of a tactical clue going on. Every time you get a quick reflex reaction to one of these China headlines, it has paid to bet that it's going to be unwound a little bit, right? Uh, it seems to overshoot in the very short term because guess what? Nothing much has changed about the broad parameters of what we know about the negotiations. Andy, how scared would the Chinese be by that even rumored threat to, to limit U.S. investment in China? Well, there have been so many rumors about China recently that I doubt they're going to be worrying about this too much. And remember, it hasn't been confirmed. We haven't seen any details. And think about it, how much sense does it make? We're talking about the Chinese economy, which accounts for a third of global economic growth. That's a larger share of global growth than from the U.S., Europe, and Japan combined, and we want to decouple from that economy. But that's a broad debate uh, that we could have had for the last two years. Uh, what, what is your take on how likely a trade deal is in, in the next couple of uh, months? I'm actually quite optimistic. I think that both sides want to do a deal for different reasons. And officials in the White House that I've spoken to recently tell me that the president really wants to do a deal. So I think we're going to see hopefully some kind of framework when Vice Premier Liu He comes to Washington in a couple of weeks. And then the key date will be when President Xi and President Trump sit down together at the APEC summit in mid-November. Barbara, how are you recommending clients to position themselves as we await those trade talks to, to kick off on the 10th of October? Well, I think ahead of time, I'm not recommending any changes at all, because as you pointed out, we've had so many head fakes in the China trade. So even if the talks kick off, somebody could storm off. They could end, you know, without any real agreement. So I think right now, people are just hoping, best case, that, they, that uh, the president does not go ahead and impose greater tariffs, as he has threatened to, that at least that's held in advance. But I am, we're not changing anything, uh, but we're not also in a hurry to, uh, to move into in, in the market here. Larry, what's your take on how we're set up in the broad market at the moment? S&P 2961 uh, ending the week. Well, I think just piggybacking on what Mike said, I think the equity market's been pretty resilient. I mean, if you would have gone back a couple of months ago and we would have had the negative headlines that we've had around, you know, the impeachment inquiry, the uh, restrictions on flows going into China, and then some of the soft IPO activity, you would have thought we would have had a pretty big sell-off. But the reality is that for the week, we ended up just slightly down, maybe 1% or so. And that's in a month where usually we really have a tough time during September. And even with this being us being down 1%, we're still up for the month. So I think when we revert back to the fundamentals over the next couple of weeks where we get some top-tier economic data and some earnings, I think we actually go higher and go back to record highs by the end of this year. Speaking of data, Mike, uh, consumer spending slowed in the month of August. Not the best sign, especially as the market has been really banking on a stronger consumer amidst a weak manufacturing backdrop. Yeah, I would say the consumer data this morning, as well as durable goods, confirmed this idea that you know, things didn't fall off a cliff in the late summer, but they moderated. Activity moderated. We're in this 2% GDP growth zone. You know, the market can probably be comfortable with that if there's help from somewhere else, right? It's okay as long as we get another Fed rate cut or something like that. But um, in general, the bond market today reacted with lower yield, so therefore kind of a little more of a, uh, you know, kind of a slow growth message there. So I do think that doesn't give the signal for stocks to race to new highs, even if they have been, you know, relatively resolute in not breaking down. Andy, what's your assessment of the state of the Chinese economy at the moment and uh, how much pressure they are under to do a deal? I think from an economic perspective, they're not under very much pressure at all. The consumer part of the economy, which is the largest part, the biggest contributor to growth, is holding up really well, just like it is here. So I think the pressure in China is more about the long term. They need to get through this tariff dispute to avoid this turning into a real trade war or a semiconductor war. But the state of the economy is good and actually market performance been pretty good so far this year. We have some data on Sunday night on PMI. What are you expecting from China? I'm not paying all that much attention to PMIs uh, because that's the smallest part of the economy. The gauge is not all that accurate. What I'm looking more for is in a couple of weeks, we're going to get the consumer spending numbers and the income numbers for the third quarter. And I think those are going to be pretty healthy. You think Chinese will cook up the data because of the China national holiday falling on Tuesday? Uh, I'm sorry? You think the Chinese will, will cook up the data a little bit? Cook up the data. Because of the National Day falling on Tuesday? No, I don't think so. The National Day holiday actually helps the consumer side. Everybody goes out and spends. Um, I think the data is pretty accurate. We have a lot of ways to check it. For example, 
you know, last year GM sold more cars in China than it sold in the United States. So if Mary Barra is giving us good information, we can double check that against the Chinese data. And this is, I think, the best consumer story in the world right now.